It's all up here. It is? Everything? I record everything I see. <laughs> and welcome back to life after the cover save episode 328 for the second time. You know what? 328 is a 13. Bad luck? Well, only in some cultures. Uh, and what about in our culture? It depends. I think it's bad luck. What about, I don't, you know what? I don't believe in good luck or bad luck. Okay. I don't believe in any of that. You believe in luck in general? No. Nah. Because if you don't believe in good luck and you don't believe in bad luck, then you probably just don't believe in luck. No. I don't believe in luck. I believe hey. you make your own luck. Hmm. Travis, you were saying that this could be an episode four? This could be episode four? Yeah. Could be. Or a lot, or it's a lot for me to think about. Yeah. <laughs> you really, you it's either episode three hundred twenty eight or nothing in the past exists and only the present. Yeah. But Blake's freaking out right now, Travis. Yeah, man. iTunes, man. <laughs> iTunes, speaking of, dude. Speaking of freaking out, Blake, I know you've been gone on uh vacation you're gonna talk about this I was, yeah trip. i was on safari but, yeah but while you were gone i just want to let you know that me and travis did some digging okay. ourselves remember that stuff you were talking about last episode or the one before yeah about like this i couldn't find anything did you were you able to find anything travis because i couldn't find anything that blake was talking about. i haven't found a single like ghost sighting in the, the, the Games Workshop facility anywhere. Yeah, I've never mentioned it on either. the internet. It's a subreddit. I'll, I'll send you the links. I'll send you the links. Okay. All okay. right. I mean, you guys, will, you, guys will, you guys will see the light, so to speak. Just, I mean, okay. it, they, you know, honestly... Hold on, let me pull it up right now. Let me see if I can, um, <laughs> just a second. Okay. Yeah, all right. Let's just do it live. Yeah, let's just do it live. I have a bookmark. Hold on. Huh. Huh, okay. Let me go to the backup site. Let me go to the backup site. Yeah, Okay. Both the primary subreddit and the backup subreddit are no longer on Reddit anymore. Maybe that's why you guys had trouble finding it. It sounds like it. I mean, um, that would explain it. Uh, you know what? It just says uh, 504 error. There's no explanation. Um, you know what? Let me, let me, I, I'm in a WhatsApp with, uh, with the, this group of, of uh, informants. And well, maybe, well. maybe, maybe they'll have some information come to light. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, well just keep for... us posted then. Keep us posted, dude. I mean, I don't want to, I don't, I think maybe some of them, I think we might be stepping on some toes. Maybe. Oh, okay. 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 I can see but, that. You don't want to ruffle any feathers. So you, you just make sure you keep yourself clean. Like I want to hear hear about you getting yourself and yeah, use the VPN, dude. Yeah, I'm all, all about the double all about VPN that VPN. That. I double double VPN it. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm you. I'm wearing two VPNs on this one, boys. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. So but tell hey. us about your trip, dude. Oh man, I just got back today, and I just flew back today, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> Classic, yeah. classic joke. I spent. Where were you? Um. Uh, I spent four <laughs> four nights four nights in the state of Colorado. Oh, okay. He got it. He got to there. It just took a we while got to there. answer the question. Where'd you and go? Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Four nights, four nights, and then most of them, and, and we, we left pretty early this morning. 
I was in Colorado, and I w- went to the city of Denver, the gateway ah, to the West. Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ever been to Denver? No. Um, I've listened to John Denver. <laughs> Rocky Mountain I've seen, High. I've seen South Park. Yeah, that's like, probably the closest I've gotten to Colorado <laughs> is watching South Park. Is it pretty you know like, what? that's pretty yeah. much it? Yeah, I've never been to Colorado neither. Um, so this was a new experience for me. They talked about it being with the altitude. You know what? I didn't bother me. I think it's because I'm from with the altitude. (laughs) Never had a problem. (laughs) I never had a problem with the altitude. Uh, that was more of a sea level thing. Uh, I think I come from a relatively elevated area. Hmm. Not nearly as high as not, not as high as high desert. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that I have a, I had a little bit of a, I don't know what you tolerance. call it. A tolerance. Yeah. So we did a lot of walking, man. Um, did a couple days of over 10,000 steps, which is a lot for me. Um, but yeah, I didn't really feel it too much. I got more tired in the airport. Uh, just, oh. you know, hoofing it to the uh, connections. Ooh. A lot so, more stress in that environment, too. You're telling me, man. Um, so yeah, you know, me and my brother like to do a brother's trip maybe once a year. And, um, we've had our cousin, we had our cousins come too as well. So it was, it was three, three men exploring the city. Excuse me, four men, (laughs) three men and me. Uh, (laughs) I'm a little tired. Four horsemen of the apocalypse. I'm a little tired. So the house we stayed at was an Airbnb and... It was a cool Airbnb. It was really weird. Uh, It was all kitschy and kind of like weird art. And it was maybe one of the homes or a home of a musician named Andy Frisco. Andy Frank, Andy Frisco. Uh, Andy Frisco in the UN. That's that's the name of his band. Kind of like, I kind of heard a little bit of it. It's kind of different, like jam bandy kind of stuff a little bit. Highly inspired by maybe by the Grateful Dead or Fish. Um, he's got over 100,000 uh, listeners, monthly listeners on Spotify, Whew. which is a pretty popular, you know, that means he's, he, he sold out Red Rocks. Yeah, so his, his, it was his house. It was really, really kind of a funky house. Sounds like he, he's a professional musician who, who makes yes. a living. Yes, music, makes a living which in is, it. It's hard to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it was definitely a drug house. Um, I don't take drugs, but like, yeah, there was a lot of like, a lot of syringes just everywhere. No, not not that kind of drug. Um, it was like you know, like marijuana and stuff in there. Oh, oh. Okay. that's so, not like, a drug. That's just a natural plant. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, That's you're just right. A vegetable, dude. Just, just a vegetable, dude. Um, I was, and I, and I, and I got to see, I got to see my buddy Manny. Oh shoot! So we hung out with Manny, uh, my brother, did you guys and my watch cousins. Any oh yeah, we did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They of it. So on, I came in late Saturday night, and uh, and then on Sunday. We went. We went and got breakfast at a cool spot called Jelly, and then we uh, went to this place called Meow Wolf. Now Ed knows what Meow Wolf is. He's been to one. You heard of oh, Meow yeah. Wolf, Travis? No. How would you describe? So. How would you describe it, Ed? Um, psychedelic. I'd say it's very well, psychedelic. Well, what what very artsy. describe it? Um, it's like, it's kind of like an art exhibit. Uh-huh. Living do, art exhibit. Yeah, but they do art in different ways. Like the one I went to was in Vegas. And on the outside, they had like some steel construct art. And then on the inside, they had like a Van Gogh um, that was projected on the walls. Like a thing you go and sit down and you watch okay. the slide and they do the Van Gogh exhibit. But then I've there's like pictures of this. Then there's like a VR thing that you could do about Van Gogh. 
And then there's like an arcade and like a bar in there. And then there's somebody selling like, oh, they had um, this thing called um, something Mart. Like it was a grocery store, but it was, it was all, all weird, like, right? yeah, it was all trippy. And like, you can go into like the freezer and like, you could like things would, you'd go down hallways and they'd turn into something else. Huh. It was like, it was like really weird. Like you open up a fridge and it's like a, there's a hallway. Yeah. And then you can walk to, inside to a new the fridge exhibit, right? to a new, like a new room where different things yeah. are happening. Okay. Yeah. I've yeah, seen okay. a lot of these locations online. Never been to one. Dude, it's worth it. It's worth it. And the fact that I found out that every single one is different means that I'm willing to go to all of them. Um, this one had a theme. It was like you were in this uh, quantum realm where, uh, I don't know, they had a whole storyline. But, like, the main room was this giant, like, weird alien jungle cave. Yeah. And then, um, then it spits out into like this uh, uh, a city, but it was a weird like quantum city where all these different species all live together at once, so you can't read the signs all all the way. And then that they call that Main Street, and Main Street had all these different um, places you could go into. Like I sent you the video of the pizza restaurant. Oh yeah. That that weird three armed six armed pizza god, that was really weird. Um, yeah, it's it's really hard to explain it. It's just like a bunch of different. It's like they got a bunch of artists and be like, all right, here's your space. Uh, go do your thing, you know. And one of them was like a weird like uh, uh, alien temple for the species that's lost in space, and they're trying to get their way back home. That's what that weird, like, um, uh, like glass cathedral picture was. I don't know if I sent that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Then the, my favorite one was this th- place called the Wash. It was like a cosmic, cosmic laundry mat. Mm. Um, where you input, you put, you put coins in to the different machines, and they're like, it's like giving offerings to different spirits and gods and stuff. Uh, and then you go into a weird hallway, like a, a secret room, and it's this big black room, and it's covered in all this occult and magical writing, like okay. tradition, like pentagrams and stuff. Yeah, okay. But it's all mm-hmm. it's all about the pen, like the writing isn't like, uh, you know, demon this, demon that. It's like this is how you get rid of grass stains. Um, mm-hmm. These are what the symbols, like all the laundry symbols, like what they mean is all laid out. Like you look at a tag, it has all those symbols. Yeah. Uh, I have a magnet so, on my washing machine that, that explains them all. Yeah. So you get it. Like I didn't know a lot of them what they meant. So it was weird. It was it was really weird. Um, it was cool though. Then uh, went to Mile High Comics. Woo! That's a big comic there, shop. There was a cat in there. A cat was living in there. A feral cat. No, she just came up and like wanted me to pet her, and I'm like, I ain't petting you. You didn't pet the cat. I let her, I let the cat rub up against me. Okay, I guess. I don't know. It's just. I mean, I wanted to pet the cat. Don't get me wrong. If they come up to you, I think it's okay to pet them. That what cat is living lice? in the dream. Who knows? I mean, it had a collar on, so it. It yeah, belongs probably. to either somebody or it lives in the fucking, it lives in the giant warehouse. It could have made that collar itself. <laughs> True. Yeah. Dude, there were so many different toys at Mile High that, like, there was, you know, your usuals. Uh, G.I. Joe's, uh, D-Man's, all the professional wrestling stuff. Like, there were so many figures everywhere. Um, I even, I even saw, uh, I'm confused. Oh, it's okay. We don't need to talk about it. Just keep, keep okay. going. Do you talk, talk, I even tell me about saw, the I even saw, um, <laughs> I even Blake's saw, honest um, to a fault, Travis. I don't know if you knew this about Blake, but he's honest to a fault. To default. <laughs> I saw Thundercat figures. I don't remember Thundercat figures. 
Oh yeah, they were big. That, I mean, that's, that's the, the whole, whole reason, reason the cartoon the existed. Business. Exactly. No, I didn't know. I mean, I know that's usually how it is, but like, that's exactly. I don't remember is. seeing them. Uh, they're they're big. great. They're big. They're not like yes. normal sized GI Joes. They're like massive. It was interesting. I think they were He Man compatible, but they're a little bit. No, but they they were bigger than He Man. You're right. Bigger than He Man. Taller than He Man. Yeah. It was interesting. You could put a ring in the back of them, and they would shoot light out of their chest. Nice. Oh, I don't. I I didn't see that. There's a battery ring you could put into their back. Nice. Yeah, there was so there's so much stuff there. Uh, Picked up a couple graphic novels. Picked up a magnet. Uh, Yeah. Uh, ate a lot of great food. Ate a lot of really good food. That's one of my favorite things traveling with my brother and stuff because he likes he likes getting food. Uh, yeah. He also likes drinking beers, so he definitely drank a lot of beers. Went to a couple breweries. Breweries. Uh, breweries. breweries. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of all a blur now because I'm 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 pretty tired from my days of travel, but. It was a really good time. It was a really good time. I recommend it, guys. Oh, we went to Red Rocks. We walked around Red, Red Rocks. Rocks. Um, Classic venue. At one point on the way to Red Rock, I had to tell my the, tell the Uber driver, like I might need to go to the bathroom, like really bad. Like you, I um, like I was able to knuckle through it, but it was crisis mode. But the, me telling, me voicing it to the driver kind of like settled everything down. Like uh, the anxiety left my body and I didn't, you know, and, I, and I didn't, I didn't have that, that stress or pressure anymore. But I'm glad he took us to the toilet because I really needed it once we got to uh, Red Rock. Let me tell you. And, uh, yeah. Didn't poop my pants. So that's good. That's the problem with travel is is you have bathroom insecurities when you're traveling. It's I tough. really don't. I don't have pee insecurity. It's all poo insecurity. Yeah, because I, I don't, don't want to be in that toilet on the airplane. So, how, so question, Blake. Yeah. How many um. How many planes did you ride on the way home? Two. And how many planes did you ride on the way there? Two. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. No direct flights. No direct flights out of Burbank. I'm done. I'm I'm changing my I'm changing my tune when it done comes with to Burbank. Travel. Um we uh Oh man, something else. One more thing. I can't remember. I'm tired. Something else. We did something else that was interesting. Gosh dang it. Anyways, uh, yeah, pooping, pooping insecurity. I don't worry about pooping. It's just you're out of your routine. You know what I'm saying? You 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 know you could go pee anywhere. Apparently, my brother told me that there's an actor, uh, Rappaport, uh, Michael Rappaport. He has an IBS, and he's become, he said he's become an expert at pooping in public. Like wow, he will. Yeah, he'll get it done. Like that, you know, in and out in a minute, and no one's none the wiser. So, you know, maybe Wait, like that's he someone just I should poops, emulate. Like drops trow and poops real quick, like boom, like Harry like, Potter. If, like he said, like they're in Central Park, if they're hanging out in Central Park with friends or whatever, you know, he could just be boom in and out behind a rock real quick. Like wow. he's gotten, yeah. He really is Superboy. <laughs> That's Fantastic what his name trip. was. That was his nickname in the movie Copland. Copland. His name was, he called himself Superboy. You never saw Copland? I don't think so. So that's just alone put on weight? Yeah. yeah. I remember the story around it, but I was never like, yeah, I want to see that movie. I saw it, cool. dude. But, yeah, uh, so Denver. It was cool. Uh, I'd go back. If anybody's interested in the Gateway to the West, check it out. Check it out. All right. That's uh, it's a big endorsement from Life After the Cover Save. We endorse 
Denver, Denver Colorado. Colorado. Was that nice. seventy five bucks a little bit too expensive for that original module? I wouldn't pay you that. Okay. They had others. It's just paper. <laughs> yeah. Is there a module that you would pay seventy five bucks for? No, because I could get all of them for free online. But what, it's about there... the item. What about a book? Was there would you pay seventy five dollars for a D and D book? I mean, I, I think so, because I think a regular book's just $50, so it's like, if it's a, if, uh, if it's cool. Um, I mean, like, so I, I have, like, uh, so I didn't have my original second edition D&D books, because that's when I started playing, and so I, I picked some up on eBay over the years, but I don't think I paid more than, like, $12 for them. That's I feel like money. older books should be worth less money, because they're crappy and old. Well, I never had a problem with old books. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole reason why Mile High Comics makes so much money is because the older books are worth more money than the newer ones. Ah, but they're old now. Old miniatures. Whoa! <laughs> that's something real. They're made of metal, dude. <laughs> they're made some of metal, old. brother. <laughs> some, some, some cases it's resin. Other cases it's plastic. I only like the metal ones, man. You know, speaking speaking of miniatures, you did play a Warhammer game while I was gone. A forty K. I game. did, yeah. We you uh, know we save that for next time, or you got time to to give give me a rundown? I'm sure, you tell me, Ed man. knows. Um. Let's talk about it. Okay. All right. So I got a, I had a rematch against uh, Cheyenne. He's prepping. Uh, actually, as we speak, he's in Adepticon, baby. Let's date the podcast. <laughs> ah, <laughs> oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> this <Yeah>. podcast dated. <laughs> uh, I'm taking this podcast to dinner and a movie. <laughs> um. It was Blood Angels. List. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, listen, I, it's it, it has parts of his Adepticon list, but he's doing the team tournament, so uh, he has like a thousand points, and he kind of like beefed it out to two thousand. We played a two thousand point game. Is he doing um, it with, Sh- with Campos? Who's on his team? No, no, he he's going with uh, SC Josh. Whoa, Necron Blood Angel fist bump, old school. Oh yeah. I tried to uh, like put together a competitive list out of the Eldar that I have, and um, and I think my list was good. What 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 was lacking was my ability to play the game. <laughs> okay. And, and, <laughs> something that um good friend pal of the show goober town brought up in a in a recent video about warhammer 40k is that there is a part of this game that i hate doing and i don't do but if you don't do it you're gonna lose the game and what, that's what basically that? that is pushing all of your beautiful models together into a tiny little lump and hiding it behind a wall if you don't do that you're going to lose Warhammer 40k. Yeah, and you, shooting game. The idea is to make your your models look as dumb as possible in a game where um, Games Workshop when it when it shows the models in these in these white dwarf magazines and in the battle reports is these models valiantly charging each other and meeting each other in the middle of the battlefield. But uh-huh. when you watch the tournaments it's everybody squeezes everything into this corner and everybody squeezes everything into this corner and they're just shooting yeah, like, at each other. I had my whole army like spread out along my battle line. I'm like, oh, I love this. This looks good. And, and I, I chose like where, okay, I want this you know, squad to go up there, so I'm going to put it on this side. And like Cheyenne managed to get like his whole army kind of behind one piece of ruins that the bottom floor was solid so I couldn't see through it. So I basically couldn't like shoot at at his entire army like the first turn, um, and uh, I could even tell which squad was which. 
But uh, listen, this is not a dig at Cheyenne. That's literally how you play 40K. Like, if you want to play 40K, that's what you have to do. Um, But the first two turns were were pretty dynamic. Uh, All that being, you know, said, I, I was able to... Um, I, I, I flubbed with my warp spiders. It, Judy, he had this block of 10 strength, si- I mean, toughness, six space Marines with flamers that gave me so much trouble the whole game, because if I ever like, if I wanted to set up to charge them or to shoot them, like I, I wanted to, to take them out with my flamer guys. But if I get within 12 inches, he overwatches and he murders me. Because that's that's like ten d six automatic hits. What were they? Uh, oh, I don't know, Space Marines, dude. But, but his whole Space Marines in the I think they come in the Indominus set. Yeah, and they all have um like, no the Leviathan set, and they all have kind of like heavy flamers, basically. All I know is I grew up where Space Marines were toughness four, but all the Space Marines now are toughness six, and it blew Weird. my mind. And I don't know, I don't know how to deal with that, because like an entire army of toughness six, three plus, two wound models, that's tough to deal with, brother. Listen, I probably you should know, look at the, the I code never out. really had a problem with toughness six, two wound, three plus armor save models. Yeah, because you've never played forty k, dude. <laughs> the other thing is, you never played with a toughness six. So I mean, there, there was definitely some frustration. I think mainly because I tried to bring like you know a competitive list, but at the end of the day, I can't make a competitive list. So now I'm working on my Phoenix Lord list. This list I'm excited about: no vehicles, all six Phoenix Lords, each with their own uh, uh, aspect warriors led by an avatar, just walking across the field. While the other armies just destroy them before they get into combat. <laughs> that sounds like a fun list, my friend. No, actually, I think it'll be, I think it will actually be really fun. Because also, it's an entire army of 60 models that are all hitting on twos. Yeah. yeah. Not, when they get close enough. Well, here's the thing twos. swooping hawks, scorpions, and banshees can all like get close enough in the first turn okay be swooping hawks could deep strike in uh striking infiltrate. scorpions can infiltrate and howling banshees it's a little bit tougher with the howling banshees but essentially they can advance and charge in the same turn so well i wish you luck sir yeah no you but don't. more importantly oh, happy hobby happy hobby that was, harsh. that was harsh. <laughs> I believe I you know what when Blake says he wishes you what'd you say? Good luck, luck. sir. Yeah, I never I don't believe in luck. Yeah. yeah oh. He doesn't believe in luck. And he also doesn't believe in games workshop. That's, That's why I didn't believe him. I believe I believe there's something there's something going on at Games Workshop. Oh brother, not that you so know. if you're if you're listening, if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't gone over to goober town hobbies on youtube you got to do that because <clears throat> i really enjoyed his last video where he got actually a little bit salty about 40k and and i totally understand what he was saying and i felt a lot of his pain uh you know it's what? not, I don't it's agree not a game them. it's not a game for casual gamers i don't i agree with that but mm. i don't i don't agree with um his the way that he said it was that when um they have when they re-roll their ones is what will triggers him yeah and, for some um, reason that rule triggers that that rule doesn't bother me at, that, at all. That, that on that on that part i didn't agree with because i think it's like instead of giving a unit the ability to re-roll all their dices they're only allowing you to reroll ones, which in essence mitigates how many dice you can reroll, which I think is yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally get the philosophy the philosophy behind reroll ones, and I don't have a problem with it either. But 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 but, yeah. but if I may, if I may, may. I think you all may. of this could be alleviated if they just brought back universal special rules. 
And that way that no matter what, whatever, whatever it was that he, he said, like, this is the rule that allows me to do that. You would know because you've read the universal special rules. It may be a slightly different, but you'll understand why. You get what I'm saying? Oh, it's feel no pain. Oh, your feel no pain is a four up. Mine's a five up. I still know what feel no pain is. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, hey, brother. They did bring back Universal Special Rules in 10th edition. No. No, they don't. You know, they don't. They, they absolutely I never did. really had a problem with Universal Special They don't special have Universal rules. Special Rules, dude. Because, they, okay, they may have Universal Special Rules, but they don't have... Each each uh, codex have their own rules in them that aren't universal. This is true, but they're they're just using they're just different ways to get the universal special rules. So mm. you get a special rules that's giving you devastating wounds, but everyone knows what devastating wounds are. Gotcha. What's devastating wounds? Devastating Multiple. wounds means that Two um, three wounds. When when you roll a six to wound, you can't take an armor save against that wound. What's this uh, re-rolling ones universal? <laughs> oh Jesus! Called? Yeah, no, that 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 one doesn't say. I I get what you're saying, Ed, but it it, it really does feel like universal special rules are back oh, because that's every, good. every every army is just using those universal special rules in um, in different ways. Now there are still sometimes a unit well a lot of times a unit will have kind of like a unique rule that mm-hmm. isn't a universal special rule but that was always <laughs> the case too i don't know about that the unique well, rules would allow them to gain a universal special rule. you know at this point i'm just gonna say i don't really care about this conversation anymore <laughs> what i care, what i care about is what we decided we were going to talk about today. All right. Which What's is? that? Mork Bork. Mork Bork. Mork Bork. I thought we were going to talk about Travis's origin story. No. Well, if we oh. get to it, yeah. But for now, okay, we're going to we talk have about time at the end. Mork Bork. Okay. That. That's right. That's right. Mork Bork. But let's Mork. talk about Mork Bork while it's fresh. Mork Bork. Yeah. Mork Bork. Let's talk about Mork Bork. You know, I was looking for a, a, I was actually looking for a Mork Bork book. Ooh. I was actually looking for a Mork Bork book at, um, <gasps> at, wow. um, Mile wow. High. We were going to go to this place called the Thane's Table, which was a D&D themed bar. Oh, wow. wow. But it was out of the way. There was another place called the Wizard's Chest that we didn't get to, and that was like a really big game store. And I would have looked for some Morkborg over there, but that didn't happen. That didn't Anyways. happen, dude. How come Ed's has a Morkborg sheet? Me and Ed. Because every, everyone's showing Morkborg, so I figured I would too. Yeah, that's his Morkborg character sheet. That's me. Is there a Morkborg game going on that I don't know about? My name's uh, Torn. Yeah, me and Ed played uh, played Morkborg last week. Last week? Uh, we're doing a little uh, two-session toe dip into Morkborg. And let me tell you, I want to jump all the way in to that dark cyst pool. <laughs> Ed, was invi- <laughs> Ed was invited to that Morkborg, but I wasn't. I invited myself, brother. Oh boy! <laughs> you, know, you know what? Blake, I only said I, I only I only said I couldn't make it because I thought it was two Wednesdays in a row, but it wasn't. It was it the wasn't. two Wednesdays I was here. <laughs> Mark Bork. Why didn't you play, dude? Uh, because I thought it was two. It was the two Wednesdays in a row. And I thought. Well, here's the I thing. Be, I did I tell you specifically which two Wednesdays you it were, and you said <laughs> ah, I'm in Colorado. But specifically, I am. it wasn't in Colorado. For You're those not. Days. You weren't, so, dude. No. Well, you know what? You got the date. Mark Bork. Up. <laughs> I didn't see Ed in the picture of the the Mark Bork. Oh, picture. I was in the picture. <laughs> dude. Was there, dude. I, I got to look back at it. Yeah, I think you should. 
I want you to scroll back. You gotta do this because, oh, because I was there and I and I thought, wow, Blake didn't say anything. About I really me thought that was gonna get under your skin, Blake. Yeah, I was so like, did I was I. really proud of you. Like Blake just really <laughs> yeah. just let that. Yeah, just... but now he's so well, so upset. Well, another thing is, is I legitimately <laughs> thought I couldn't make it. Yeah, but you legitimately didn't think I was gonna be in the game, but I am, dude. I'm oh, playing I wasn't, you. I wasn't. I was playing you, you in the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was it? Elliot, was it was it Hotline Xbox Hotline? Yeah. Every, yeah. every okay. time I go into a room, I say, "I, I think I got a poo." Nah, I should be fine. <laughs> and then we keep walking, dude. It's every great time, thing. dude. My character's so. All big right. Well, dumb. Blake looks up. I'm I'm gonna tell you a little bit of what I know about Mork Borg. Mork Borg. Uh, Mork Borg is a rules light RPG uh, setting and um, and rule uh, rule set. Yeah, 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 it's a setting and a rule set together. Uh, it is heavily inspired by uh, Doom, Death, I uh, maybe even a little bit of uh, Sludge Metal. Like it is, oh, it is oh, set in a <laughs> fantasy world that is on the brink of an apocalypse. Mm-hmm. It's not a post-apocalyptic game; it's an apocalyptic game. Wow. Like the apocalypse is actively happening. Uh, <laughs> it, if you so so, who is Mark Borg for? Do you like to play role playing games? I can't find the picture. I'm moving on. Check. <laughs> Do you like uh, yeah, Blake, Swedish, you like Norwegian, Doom, Death Metal? Uh, maybe this game's for you. Check. Do you like disturbing imagery? Check, check. Uh, the, the art design of the rule book is disturbing and pretty freaking awesome. Uh what else to say? Well, what do you? Uh, what are your impressions of just uh, an outside looking in? Because you haven't played yet, Blake. <laughs> yeah, just keep on rubbing that in. Yeah, yeah, Blake, you um, haven't played. What do you think about the game? Well, from what I understand, it's a Swedish company. Yes, um, Swedish, and I think they're indie, very independent they're an indie yeah. indie company. Um. I do know that uh, the it's a very um, zine, uh, a very indie zine um, design to their products. Uh, I think uh, what's his face, um, Uncle Adam, highly inspired by how they did it. Mm-hmm. Um, work, work. Um, yeah, that's basically what I know. It's very demonic. That's how I saw a lot of a lot of the imagery is very demonic. Uh, it yeah. may or may not be demonic, but whatever. I don't really care whether it is or it isn't. But it did look fucking cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if demonic is the right word because I I don't believe that it's tying itself to any sort of like uh, Christian belief. No. Uh, uh, it's very Nordic in its uh, in its um, its belief. Like like the gods of this world are these two two headed basilisks, with are like these great serpent creatures, and they have foretold the end of the world. Um, what I absolutely love about this game is its character creation. Ooh, it's ooh, very. Ooh. Uh, easy and minimalist. Like in the main book, there's I think six, yeah, six different uh, character archetypes or classes. But it is you randomly generate like everything about your character down to its like its flaws, its philosophy, philosophies, what you have on your person, your weapon, um, and. Uh, it's very sad, easy to, to make a character, and 
the way that they design these very simple like d6 charts or dh you know they tell you what dice to roll and you're putting it all together but in about five or six die rolls you could have a whole character built up and it's so flavorful and you're already like immersed in this like gross decrepit world (laughs) by by just this combination of putrid words that they have uh, given you uh, to create your persona for this game um you know for 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 example i think uh uh i am going to go to their website and what i love so much about this game are the free tools that they give to the players and the dungeon masters alike uh i could go to their website right here and they have um a link to a random character generator that they uh, that they uh, created, and it's the the Skrimvingberfer. The Skrimvingberfer, um, take me there, and it just boom immediately. It makes uh, a, a character. You are Valka, educated by the damned amongst the valley of the unfortunate undead's mud pits. You could save this doomed world if only the unwashed masses would understand your genius. The road, an unreasoning maze, every temple soaked in blood, each destination drenched in gloom. You are suspicious and loudmouth, staring, manic gaze. You make jewelry from the teeth of the dead, if this can be considered a bad habit. (laughs) <laughs> you carry with you an ochre tablet. And this, uh, what is written on this tablet, literally removes a creature's essential meaning for D4 rounds, during which enemies will not attack it, even if it attacks them first. And you have a water skin and a knife and a string necklace with 26 mismatched teeth. And there's only four stats, strength, agility, presence, and toughness. So, like, all that is just generated through, like, a few roles. But they have this great w- website that just, like, just generates a character. Because this this game is brutal. Like, you only have a few hit points. It's going to be very easy to die. And it's so easy in the middle of a session. Oh, I died. Like, ah, there is, uh, in the next room, you find someone wailing. And you just re-roll a new, char- a new character. It just, uh, I, I, I just adore it. Uh, we, we, we played just a first like two hour session and, um, I was fully immersed in my character and in totally the world, he was. uh, our good friend, Tom from, uh, from Northern California, uh, from, from Napa was, uh, was running it for us. It's such a good uh, job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Tom did a great job of just kind of like setting the 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 um, the table and and letting us just devour this this dark delight. You Lars know, was asked, playing. I asked this question, um, and it didn't get answered earlier in the chat, where you invited me to Morkborg, and I declined because I got confused. Uh, has Tom run it before? No, this is his first time running it. Oh, yeah. okay. But but uh, he has all the stuff and has uh, has wanted he's, to for a while. He's a, yeah. he is a Tom is a uh, a a master role player. So I, I you know I I, yeah, I think you I give agree. him any system any system and he'll and he'll go at it. Yeah, who cares? I don't you know that could have been me in there. Get rid of Lars. It should have been. <laughs> Got so, playing. oh, uh, I saw I saw the picture. I did see Ed in there. I saw Ed's picture. Yeah, yeah, dude, I was there. He was there, dude. Legit. My guy. Maybe, maybe. Uh, when I try to do a stealth check, if I roll an odd number, I'll uh, start to whistle. It's funny. He's really good at stealth. Yeah. But also, he has the uncontrollable desire to whistle whenever he's hiding. It's yeah, really funny. It's like a nervous whistle. Oh, I found the the, the okay. Uh, so, what, did you, so Ed, was yours generated based on the little the little thing? 
The, uh, I don't uh, know. Yeah. Travis Travis made my character for me. Yeah, oh, okay. but the we all just used Scrivener and and the um we all said we're just gonna do the first one that 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 we get. So it's like whenever you load up the 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 website, it gives you a character. You could kill that character and just make a new one. But we all just said let's just like completely random and so the guy that i got the type of person like the the class or not whatever? not on no, that I'm not website seeing that. i'm not seeing okay. it on the app but you could it's just interesting if, though if you, you really could have want this specific- up sorry I, I just i'm seeing the generator right now and it, it's interesting it says literally it says uh click to kill this one and it just rolls you a new character so you could have this up on your tablet and just uh, when you have to roll the new character, oh, just boom, kill this one, add it again. If it's as grindy as you say, you could print it out. You could turn it to Swedish, right? That's this is really, right. this is really cool. This is, this is wonderful. Go ahead. They had built a similar thing for monsters as well. You could basically make an infinite amount of monsters, Ooh. and it just kind of uh, creates a just disturbing thing for you to to fight because there's only like 12 monsters in in the main book but um but they're all fantastic like one of the monsters is like this porcelain fiend which are these like living porcelain dolls that can you know just drive you insane um my uh my character that i rolled oh shoot do you remember his name ed uh uh, my character sheet's right here oh worm boom Prugel, and he uh, and he's a um, from a secret Bergen crypt church. He's like a priest, and he actually has a silver cross, and he can present the silver cross and essentially turn undead, um, and also goblins and minor trolls. Uh, but uh, how the magic works in this is fantastic. The priest is actually able to cast spells. But he just has this scroll that he could read. And the name of the scroll is fantastic. It's the nine violet signs unknot the storm. And you could cast D2 lightning bolts if you if you cast it successfully. But if you don't cast it successfully, you take D2 damage. And um, you're dumbfounded and can't cast spells like for the rest of the day. And uh, <laughs> I only have three hit points. So, like, literally, like, miscasting two spells and... Uh, we'll kill. And you could be dead. Well, I, they're, they're, they have a great-looking website. I've looked at it before. Um, and it does have a third-party license. Third-party... I looked at a third-party license. It's very um, forgiving. It's essentially... They're, they're saying, like... Yeah, make whatever you want. Just you know, say that this is our game. Just put our name on that, and that, like you know, I mean, there's some legalese there, but that's essentially what it is. They're all like, and they're saying you could make it, do it for free, or you could sell it. They're like, we don't care. You uh, put just put our name on it and get our game out there. Um, and there's a bunch of free adventures. Oh yeah, and also actually, if everyone's interested on the website, there is a free PDF that is basically the full rules and it but it's just it's none of the cool artwork so so the art design of the rule book is spectacular like like that the part of the beauty of this game is kind of like letting your mind try and and absorb like the chaos that is the rule book now i'm not saying that like it, it's hard to read like it actually is very easy to read but every page is like a piece of demented like heavy metal art and the, the, the rule book itself like the the rule book itself builds the world yes helps exactly. you build it like just the details or how things are structured just like yeah like yeah you get you get a feel for the world just by looking at not but I do like the words necessary. They give you a, a, a basically a plain text PDF that has the whole you know game on there too. If if you wanted to just you know try it out, their their website has so much free awesome content. I'm I'm just really I was very ha- it was it was very easy for me to buy this rule book, which um 
Yeah, I mean, RPG rule books aren't cheap. I, I think, you know, after it got shipped, it was like $40, and it's a relatively small rule book. But uh, it was... It is beautiful. Yeah, I, I think I think it's one of my favorite RPG rule books I've ever owned. It's 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 really a pleasure to to, to leaf through, uh, and so, I'm not even like a huge like uh, Doom, uh, you know, death metal head. Like I, I like I, I like more like seventies metal, which I mean, Doom metal is just you know, it's just the. <sighs> It is the the child of seventies metal, uh, truly. But um, I don't know. I real I really dig the, the, this system. Is just there's something about it that speaks to me. Um, I love it. Did, did uh, are you guys playing the the rot black sludge? Yeah, that, that, that's literally just just Tom's just using that like starter. Uh, quest it's it's a simple kind of like you know dungeon crawl but it's uh, it's perfect to kind of just plop you into the into the world most fun uh yeah absolutely no, it's it's a, uh, I'm, I'm uh i'm glad you guys are getting to play it I, yeah i i, I think I it's it's it. so fantastic as a one shot or a couple night you know if, if you can only get together it's so easy to just like hey let's just Roll up some Mork Borg and let's do 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 this. But I also think that the storytelling is so rich that it would be really fun to try to do a campaign. Because essentially, you could run a campaign and you're trying to see when the world ends. Essentially, is is what the campaign structure is. But it's so funny. Uh, like there's this part. I'm not not funny, but it's interesting the events that happen like oh th there's whenever there's seven triggering events before the apocalypse and each time you get to one you roll on this chart and instead of like really telling you what it is it, it reads like a like a piece of scripture like the son and the daughter look into the, the north and it's it's totally up to interpretation of of what that is going to look like in your campaign as uh, what i think it's just spectacular yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you guys are playing. What do you think, Ed? What did you think? What was your takeaway from it? It's interesting, is what I'll say. It's different, is what I'll say. It's interesting and different. Um You know, it's it's like a, like uh, Travis said, it's a lot, it's a lot simpler. There's not um and he even tells you like if it's something that's difficult this is a role that is, is expected if it's like there's some if the things are kind of easy then the roles are easy you know what i mean um but like yeah the 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 setting's a little strange um and i'm not a huge fan of the 70s metal and the death metal but um you 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 get the world you know it's a weird world it's a dark world and um it's pretty funny i think it's it's kind of funny in some ways uh like travis immediately started eating some some uh what are they bl butterflies we, we started yeah, out in the there's room some and there's flying butterflies and travis is like i eat it and then like it restores your health apparently so what we saw all started catching them and putting them in, in a bag so that we had a butterfly just in case we get hurt. And somebody already, somebody, I think Lars jumped into this pit. Like, uh, Steve was looking for like some rope to make a makeshift rope so we can go down there. And Lars was like, I'm just jumping in. And he took a bunch of damage. So he had to eat his butterfly. It was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's fun. I would like to maybe try to do another try it out because it like i said you could you could do a a short like travis said like a one shot and that might take two nights uh, i have to go back to their website which is just spectacular they have a dungeon generator in there too Jeez, hot damn i think blake should run a mork bork mork bork now dude i'm running a I'm running a Paleo Mythic, brother. Oh yeah, I can't wait for that Paleo <laughs> Mythic game. Well, I mean, I can wait because I've been waiting for six years. Ooh, 
Paleomythic. Um, that sounds fun. Paleomythic, dude. Paleo. Oh. <laughs> That's a paleomythic. Um, you know, I was down. I was down to. I was down for Mork Bork a while back. <laughs> so was you I. Know? So was I, dude. I said whatever. I've always been down. I mean, I never had a problem with Mork Bork. Um, yeah, I do want to play it. I think this one would be a fun one to play in person, to tell you the truth. Yeah. There you go. Simple enough, dude. Yeah. Very little prep. Yeah. Now, as we wrap this up. Yeah, let's wrap it up, dude. I want to show you, talk about what I have. Now, this was a book written in the uh, the third third-party Mork Bork license. This is a, um, it's called Forbid, The Forbidden Psalm. Forbidden Psalm, miniature gaming at the end of the world. Uh, a miniature game of blood, metal, death, and socks. Uh, it's, I looked at it, You. it's, the character creation's pretty easy. Um it's ba- it, it says it is inspired by and compatible with Mork Bork. I don't know what that means. Exactly. Compatible. But um, <laughs> it has a campaign. Me. You can play it cooperatively. You can play it independently. Um, there's What's the scale? Is it is it kind of like dungeon crawly or is it skirmish? Oh, scale wise, oh, yeah, like, sub skirmish, yeah. Like I think I thought it was, when I remember looking at it, I remember it was I thought it was one. Is it kind of like Rangers of Shadow Deep that kind of vibe? Uh, it's twenty eight millimeter. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how many models. Let's just let's okay. Just listen to him read. Select the five. Start mo- it's on a page one. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's Warband. Uh, so it says five, five model models. Okay. Five model Warband. But they do have um they do have some some rules on how you would do with, with multiple people. And of course the uh the stats are the Morkborg uh, negatives and positives. Yeah, you're basically you're just adding a a number to 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 a die roll. That's it. Yeah, and what I liked is the storyline, the campaign in it is basically there's a wizard who is making you go out. He's forcing you to run these missions, and he's trying to collect socks. It's awesome. Socks. I don't know if that – would that make sense, that a mad wizard is making you collect socks? Is, well, I mean, it does and it the, doesn't, right? Yeah, it's crazy, but I mean, if you're in Morkborg, then it's not that It feels crazy like the the main rule book of Morkborg isn't doing anything that silly, but it doesn't feel completely out of place. He could literally be a mad wizard though. That's the yeah, thing. Exactly. He 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 legitimately is a crazy wizard, yeah. Crazy. He's a crazy person and he wants he needs socks for who knows what. But he's so dangerous, I think you, you do what he says. Of course. Exactly. I think that's the storyline. So you're just a half naked guy with a femur. Yeah, man. You're ready to you're ready to you're ready to die. But you wanna live. But you wanna live, dude. Well, I mean, I, I do wanna play the game. So here we go. I mean final thoughts. Life after the cover save. Gives a uh, two big thumbs up for Mork Bork. Well, I haven't played it. I can't. I can't. Two I giant can't, thumbs up, dude. Like the I giant is. Well, Blake, I didn't say three thumbs up. Yeah, I said two I thumbs can't. Up. I can't rightly, or I mean, with any sort of integrity, uh, <laughs> give this a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I think we'll call this uh, a pending. Two giant boat. thumbs up. One from Ed and one from Travis. And that's all that really matters here, folks. The the if Travis says it's good and Ed says it's good, 
It's a good game. It's good, man. And everything no. that you need is online, which makes it even better. You only have to buy a dang thing to try it out. Yeah, man. You could really try this out, like literally for free, just going to their website. Which and and here's the thing, I guarantee that you're probably gonna go pick up the 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 book if if you try this out. And I think that is how you should market a game. And that is a Travis promise. That's a Travis, Travis guarantee. <laughs> that's Travis. That's Travis promise, dude. The fact that you'll buy it after you play it. That's oh, good yeah. enough for me, and that should be good enough for Blake. Well, but, but it's not. I think. Well, yeah. Well, I think we Two should. Giant thumbs up. We should go ahead and get going on Travis's origin story. Actually, I got to get up pretty early tomorrow morning. Maybe we could do that next time. Oh, oh, that was, oh, I didn't realize how far yeah, we dude, got. It's, it's an yeah, hour. man, we're over um, an hour at this point. So, That's okay. Okay, next episode. Next episode. Yeah. New host introduction next time. That's right. And always remember, everybody listening at home, uh, in the immortal words of Bruce John Jackson, Life is always sweeter. After the cover save. <laughs> Mark Bourne.